Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Real Fast Food. Oh, y'all see that down on the bottom? Yeah, there's a, well, I, there's a special guest, so I have somebody in the studio with me today. Why don't you come on in, man? I got the intro, I got the intro. How's it going? So this is my youngest son. This is baby boy. This is Josh. Uh, also an animal in the kitchen, loves to cook. Obviously, he got that from me and not from the other side because the other side wasn't really known for cooking. No, no not at all. So, uh, say hi to the people, son. Hey, what's going on, people? Uh, excited to be here on the show. Um, I'm going to try not to outcook them. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to try because then I, that's a whole different situation. But, the student um, is never greater than the master. Yo, this is not Star Wars, dude. <laughs> and you are not Luke. Anyway, however, <laughs> I am your father. We got polenta today, man. What's up with that? Polenta. So yeah, so we wanted to do something. He said, called me a little while ago. He said, "Yo, pop, I'm coming through. Let's cook something." It's like, cool. all right, cool. Cool. let's. Cool. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, come over, eat somebody else's food. You know, let's do lunch. So we went to the store and we was like, okay, let's do something. Let's make it super, super cheap, but make it semi fancy. Something you might not get every day. We don't do we don't do crap. Nah. We don't like y'all said we don't do y'all y'all do crap. We don't do crap. Nah. You know what I'm saying? We don't nah. Do that. Nothing out the box or the bottle. Mm -mm. So we was like, okay, for less than twenty bucks, we could have a semi fancy meal for two. And um, y'all ever seen the Power Rangers? It's kind of like the Red and the Blue Ranger. They get together and they morph. About to make something beautiful. What does Red and Blue make? Go America. Go to your room. <laughs> and now, and as you can see, these are the only ingredients that we are going to use. Everything you see here, everything you see here, everything the light touches. <laughs> everything the light touches. Uh, so we've got some wild Nova salmon, Nova deli sliced, and it is smoked. That's uh, Alaskan salmon. The star of today, believe it or not. Is polenta or yellow corn grits so for those of you who are not familiar familiar with polenta it's basically grits but it's still it, it, it's it's almost basically the it's same different thing because it's better you ain't gonna know the difference player <laughs> we've got some cilantro zucchini okay. mango mango tomato heirloom <laughs> <laughs> some uh, green onions and of course Wah, wah, wah. Habanero, pepper. Habanero pepper. We're going to dice these all up, get them situated so you guys don't have to watch us through that. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to make the polenta the star of the show and we're going to add to that and you guys get to watch us do it. All right. You ready? Here we go. Chop time. Okay, so now you're probably wondering, well, what exactly are we doing with all this stuff? I bought it. It's in my kitchen. I'm listening to you. So tell me what it is. Basically, what we're going to be doing is taking uh, the like a polenta, polenta cake, uh, essentially, and we're going to make a mango honey habanero chutney to go with it. All right, so we need to start prepping all the stuff to do that. Just get yourself some little side bowls, nothing crazy. It could be plastic, it could be glass, it don't matter because it'd be like that. You know what I'm saying? Any type of honey will do. This is what we got. You know, nothing crazy. Just get it from your local Publix or grocery store. And then, uh, yeah, so while your polenta is starting to marinate and you know get all delicious and nutritious you should start preparing the stuff for your mango habanero chutney and uh, we're gonna jump into that right now so like he was saying the very first thing you're gonna need to do three cups of that chicken broth in there turn it on you know what i'm saying while we're getting over here or you can do water you know or water but fancy y'all fancy you know three cups go in there now we're gonna go chop all the stuff and be good to go all right, once that gets nice and simmering, go ahead and tell me what we got to do, Pops. Well, uh, so we got a cup of the polenta. Mm -hmm. And the cup of polenta is going into three cups of the chicken broth or water, whatever you have. Uh, I just happen to have chicken broth, so I used it. Never used it like this before, but I want that to boil first, and then I'm going to add the polenta. Uh, Boom, bop, bing, bow. Okay, so we've got the chicken broth uh, boiling. So I'm going to slowly stir in. See, I got a whisk. I'm going to start stirring before I put that polenta in there. And I'm going to slowly stir in the polenta. We do this so it doesn't clump, lump, or bump. 
I'm gonna say it with me. Clump, clump, lump, clump, or bump. Or bump, baby. We don't want none of that play. Mm. We don't want none of that. All right. And oh, I got a little bit more in there. Now, you would flavor your polenta just like you would flavor your grits. And if you don't flavor your grits, something wrong with you. Indeed. With you, something is wrong. wrong. And I'm gonna put this on low, and I'm gonna let this go for a little while, while we chop up our vegetables. And for those who are like, what is low? I'm gonna show you because I know how them YouTubers be sometimes. Put that mug on three, on three. That's what we got it on. They be like, yeah, 350 degrees. We ain't got thermometers, okay? We ain't got time for that. It's real fast foods, real fast efficient foods. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna show them how I do it. So anytime I make my my uh, my grits. I like a little curry in there. Gives a nice flavor. So you, you don't want bland grits. So I just put a little bit in there, maybe about a tablespoon or so in there. Today is more for color. Usually I go a lot heavier than that uh, because I want the flavor of the curry. Put a little bit of pepper in there. Neither Josh or I, I'm gonna turn this fire down a little bit more. Neither Josh or I are afraid of a little heat. And you want So re remember the other day when we went when we went fishing, yep. we just like, yo, we let's just grab a little, no fish. little, little yeah, we didn't catch any fish. But we said, yo, let's grab something real quick just to, so we don't be hungry on the boat. So we stopped at McDonald's. Cost us 14 Yeah, like 14 15 14 bucks. $15. It wasn't right? cheap. And I mean, with junk food, it was horrible, it was nasty. Why do we go to McDonald's? Because it's convenient. It's quick. People say, I don't have time to cook. If you got time to go to McDonald's, you got time to cook. It doesn't take long. I promise you, it's probably about the same. Probably about the same time, probably probably about the it's same cheaper. amount of money. It's yeah, it might be cheaper. Because what did I do with that receipt? We spent $15.25 on what you're going to see today. Yep, I'll show it to you. We'll find it. We'll put it in there right about right now. You know. Now, the, the smoked salmon, the lox, that was $5 by itself, almost $6 by itself. The polenta was $3 by itself. And we still got some fresh vegetables. We didn't get any frozen stuff. Everything is fresh, folks. When you take the time to make it right, Make it right and take the time. Boom. You know what I mean? All right, let's get back and uh, get this chopping done. Sir, I ice her. All right, and so while the polenta is going, we just want to get our vegetables ready for our little mango chutney relish thing that we're going to put on there. And why are we doing that? Just because we can. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, when you go to those fancy restaurants, and I am including the stem in there. I know a lot of people throw away the stem for cilantro. There's so much flavor in there. Leave it in there, folks. Folks, leave it in there. Especially when you're making this type of food, you know, with the chutney, you're, you're not gonna, you're not gonna miss it. You're not gonna really know it's there. You know, so put it in there. You paid for it. Eat it. Yeah, they didn't have no problem charging you for it. You know what I mean? So if they ain't had no problem charging, I ain't got no problem eating. Come on, somebody. <laughs> All right. So that's the cilantro. I'm going to leave that off to the side. Now, I want my green onions. Take the little root in off. Boom. Gone. Root in the two, they ain't got no booty. They ain't got no booty. Okay, Josh. <laughs> far, that's, that's the cooking, bro. And we're not cooking this, so it doesn't really matter the size, per se. Uh, I mean, of course, you don't want anyone to get a huge piece, but... All we doing, folks, is just making it pretty. Making it pretty is all we doing, folks. And you can definitely choose to cut it a bit smaller if you want to, or even a bit bigger. But like I said, we are not afraid of no bite. You know what I mean? So we're going husky. I mean, we paid good money for that. We paid $15.25. I want to taste it. So here, listen, if you've never had a habanero pepper before, this is not for the faint of heart. If you don't like spicy food, do not put the habanero pepper in there. Hold on, hold on. Say it again. If you don't like spicy food, do not, I repeat, do not put the... Now, after I cut into this, there's going to be seeds and a membrane in there. That's where most of the heat is. Go on, show them. Go on, show them what that look uh, like. So, I'm going to just cut it in half real, real quick, just so you can see. Now, see, all, on it for you. see all them seeds is this? Mm -hmm. in that membrane? That's where the heat is. Mm -hmm. There, yes, the, the outside skin, the fruit part, is also spicy. But the real spice that knocks you off your feet is in the seeds and the membrane. Now, Josh and I like spicy. We're going to leave it in there. So if you can tolerate heat but don't want a lot, a lot of heat, just take the seeds and the membrane out 
and then just use the, the skin part. All right. Otherwise, stick with your regular table pepper. You know, the stuff that the... And it'll be just as flavorful. It just won't have that heat. Yeah. You know, but like I said... You got to like the heat yeah, in order to... Especially for habanero. To do habanero. Yeah, this is not for people who don't like... Ooh, I'll them I know you like to eat food, but you ever ate food to try to eat you? <laughs> this it right here? Let's do it. Nice and thin and fine. It's all about color. It's all about presentation. Something my dad taught me a long time ago that I've always carried over into my cooking is... You eat with your eyes first. First, baby. Eat with your eyes first. I don't want to eat nothing that looks nasty, dry, and disgusting. It's just not me. I'm not going to eat it. It could taste delicious, sure. But if it looked like crap, I'm not going to eat it. So he's just mincing it up, getting it real fine. Now, we are going to put some honey in it, and that will tame it down just a little. But that's a habanero, folks. That ain't regular pepper, so you're only going to tame it down but so much. Easy, easy. We're going to come back and we get it on the bowl, all right? Now, folks, this is December 2020. Y'all already know we're in the middle of a pandemic. In the middle of a pandemic, y'all already know. But when you're handling a spicy pepper like a habanero, wash your hands. Just wash your hands. I don't think that hurts you. You need to say it again. When you was working with a habanero, a habanero you working with? Wash your hands. Wash your nasty hands. Oh, you're going to regret it later. You're going to know you didn't. <laughs> All right, that's it. All right, so you should be stirring your polenta right about now. You should be checking on it. it should be really condensing down and look just like that. Nice and delicious. Do that one more time. Do that one more time. Mmm. You know what to make it even more creamy? Uh-uh. You're not going to do it. I'm going to do it. You're not going to do it. I'm going to do it. You're not going to do it. Bet I do. You're not going to do it. Boom. Oh, my goodness. He done put the whole thing of mozzarella cheese. Some mozzarella. About a cup of that, guys. Something crazy. Unless you like a whole lot of cheese like you know me, then you can. I, I made some butter yesterday. I got a little bit left. Say that one more time. You said I, made, I made some honey butter I yesterday. I think you may have put that in the video, didn't you? Uh, Yesterday's video, yeah. Okay. For the, uh, what did I make? Well, go check I, I that made, out. Uh, I made, oh, for my bread. Mm -hmm. Video number so, two. I'm going to add that in there, and I'm just going to stir it. And then after this is, and it's almost done, but after this is mixed well, I'm actually going to take it off. Actually, I can t turn the fire off now. I'm going to pour this into a pan, and I'm going to stick it into the refrigerator. Not refrigerator. The refrigerator. Refrigerator. And I want it to cool off so that it kind of, it, it, it has somewhat of a, a cakey consistency, a gelatinous cakey Hardened, melty, okay, gooey. You you thing. you you're doing the most. It's gonna be good. It's gonna firm up. We're gonna <laughs> cut it. <laughs> all right. So now the plant is done. You're gonna grab yourself a pan. You want it to be somewhat deep. Um, this is all we got to work with right now. So you'll see what we're talking about here. You're gonna pour the polenta into your pan. It no. doesn't matter. You're not cooking it or anything right now. Just think of this more of like a, a mold. Yeah, if I had a smaller a uh, roasting pan or you know something smaller than what I have I would have used that but I want my polenta cakes to be at least about an inch or so thick and so if I spread it too much it's only going to be a half an inch thick and I want it thick so what I'm going to we put that in there smooth it out mm -hmm. and then Give this is going to go sometimes. in the refrigerator just so it chills that's it all right, you give it a little shake, kind of get the little air bubbles out or whatever that you need to do. And that's all that matters, popping in the fridge. So we are going to do something special with this zucchini. We're going to kind of make them into somewhat of a noodles. Um, and uh, there's really no easy way to do it unless you have an automatic thing. But like I said, it's all about real fast, we cheap a, foods. We got a peeler, so. So peelers would work too. If you got a peeler, a peeler will work for sure, for sure. Um, you could also just use a knife, completely up to you. But try to make these thin, try to make these thin. Kind of like this. Watch this. Bada bing, baby. All I did was take a little peeler, peel it, and get them about this thick. Take a knife, cut it right down the center, and they should be nice and thin. You want to call them long ways. Nice and thin about this. Nothing crazy. Nice and thin. All right? That's all you got to do. Easy. And then, of course, still got the mango right there. Real easy. Cut it up how you like it. Really don't matter at that point. We're going to chunk it. We're going to chunk it and chop it, all right? And you should have your chutney station somewhat looking like this, okay? 
You got all your cilantro, you got your scallions, your green onions, whatever you want to call them, your habanero, your zucchini, your mango, and then keep that heirloom tomato. We're going to do something special with that, all right? Okay, so <clears throat> we got everything cut up for the chutney. We've got our mango. Josh and I just tasted a piece of this mango that was sitting on the cutting board. We did not wash the cutting board after we cut the habanero. Yeah, we were reminded. But we like the spice, so it's not that big of a deal. Cilantro in, green onions in, and then everybody's favorite pepper, the habanero. That's a full whole habanero in there. That's, that's danger. That's danger. It's going to have a nice little bite to it. A nice little bite to it. It's going to have. All right, so now I'm going to put in a little bit of salt. This is pink Himalayan sea salt. Not too much. Did you know that pink Himalayan sea salt was from the Himalayans? And it's pink. Yo, facts. Blew my mind. Put just a little bit of black pepper in there. Not too much. It's not like you're really going to taste it at this point with that habanero in there. Now, the honey will kind of tame everything down. I'm going to put about a good tablespoon. Yeah, be or liberal. Be liberal. Or two in there. So that is going to tame down some of the bite for the habanero. Uh, and you then, said tame, not controlled, y'all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Still don't play with that now if you ain't used to that. And I'm just going to stir all of this stuff together. Real simple. Look at the wrist. Look at the wrist. <laughs> <laughs> Real simple, you're just mixing it up. That's it. That's what I'm up. doing. Isn't that pretty? When you need to stretch it out, all you do, add a little bit of olive oil. Boom. It's just a, it's a nice carry. And, and and for this, and for this type of, of chutney, don't use that cheap olive oil. That flavor nah. matters. Nah. That's one we got from Tarpon Springs. Yeah, it's Tarpon good. Season. So try and use a, a higher grade olive oil. You ain't got to go super crazy, but. You extra don't virgin, not olive oil. Extra virgin olive oil. Yeah, extra virgin. There you go. So, and then when I would like to see a little more red in there, but it's okay. I told y'all we got a secret surprise for you: heirloom tomato. Bam! <laughs> hmm. Yeah. So, uh, as Josh mentioned earlier, uh, you eat with your eyes first. You know, color is everything. If it doesn't look good, it probably isn't. It's possible that it is, but usually it's not. Just mix it up real good, and that's it. Yeah. Uh, 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 Taste that uh. for me, player. Oh, okay. Here we go. Let me get that. Let me get that. I'm gonna pan over to my face real quick, so y'all can. See. <laughs> is it biting? Yes, yeah, it is trying to eat me. I ain't gonna lie. But, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is delicious. That is divine. Here, here, go ahead and take that spoon back. That's good. That's real good. So, I don't know if we told you, we've never done this before. We've never cooked this before. Um, it's just a matter of taking your skills that you already know and mixing them up to build something that you want. Cooking something is not hard. No. So, right now, remember this weird salmon we bought? It's a lot. It's just smoke. Ooh. It smells good. It smells really good. So yeah, the smoked salmon. We're just gonna cut a little piece, taste it, see if we like it. We'll come back to you and let you know. So in conclusion, <laughs> it's good. All right. So we, we took the chutney back out. Um, we realized we, we wanted some type of acid uh, of sorts in there. And uh, Josh remembered that I had some balsamic vinegar, but not just any kind of balsamic vinegar. This is a dark chocolate balsamic vinegar and boy is that stuff delicious we got this from our tarpon springs florida but we added some of that in there we're just stirring it around and then we're going to put it back in the fridge just want to let you know what we did all right coming up next now around this time go ahead and pop on a pan put it on about medium high heat non-stick non-stick very important non-stick just get it hot that's all you got to do nice right now hot. you should be uh pulling your polenta out of the uh go ahead and pull your polenta out of the frigidaire or the freezer, whichever one, and we'll show you what to do. Okay, so we just pulled the polenta out of the freezer, and look. 
kind of firm. There's a reason for that. You kind of want it firm. I'm trying to show you the texture here. But as you can see, I'm poking at it, you know, almost like gelatin, but not really. So that's all you want to do. Make sure it's kind of firm. We're going to take it, get yourself something like this. Just a little cutter. You can do it by hand if you want to. It don't matter. Like I said, we already had this laying around, so we're going to go ahead and use that. Okay. Yeah, you can do it like that and flip it over. And then you're going to come over to your pan. You're going to put the olive oil in there, sear it up. I'm going to show you what that looks like. All right, now I'm sacrificing myself showing you this. <laughs> Woo! Pops! Pops, is popping! Get them! But what you're doing is right now, you're just searing them. You want them to be nice them and crispy. Just want to Nice and crispy. Nice and crispy. You can kind of see where it's getting brown there. Stuff like that. You can go show them the bottom there. You know what I'm saying? Boom. Look at that golden brown it's visually appealing all right we're just flipping them over nothing crazy getting them nice and crispy you're not cooking it this is really just for color all right here's that heirloom tomato real simple all you're gonna do is cut it somewhat thick keep it in the circular pattern and you're going to see what we're going to do with that. Yes, sir. Is you ready to do it? I'm ready to do it. Right. Shall we show them how to play? We shall. We Let's shall. Let's do it. Uh, so, <clears throat> we're going to start the plating now. We're taking our polenta cakes out. Look at that. That is beautiful. Gorgeous. And that's, I mean, you'd expect to see that in a fancy restaurant somewhere. Now, those heirloom tomatoes we've been talking about. You're going to take one. You're going to put it on top. But we ain't done. We're going to take some of those zucchini ribbons. Going to kind of... Going to go right on top. And there's no wrong or right way, you know, to plate. It's just how you express yourself and what's visually appealing to you. You know, let the food speak for itself. Huh? Let the food speak for itself. Say it again. I'm not going to say it again. Oh. <laughs> but real simple. Look at that. Zoomed in a little bit more. That's it. Easy peasy. And then we want to take the locks, right? The lock, 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 locks. All right. Let's see. We're figuring this out together, y'all. So, I don't know how I want to put this on. These are a little thicker than I thought they would be. Do we want to cut them up? Oh, well, they're kind of falling apart. So. Yeah, I see you eating like that. Mm, mm, mm. Let me zoom in on that for you. And folks, this is why it's important to keep your hands clean. You shouldn't be afraid to cook with your hands. Um, oh. You know what we put on top of that? I'm going to show you. They're not ready for it. Bam! Mm -hmm. Got to be more careful. Indeed. Let me get a little close up on that in there. Oh, Lord. All right. And then I'm just going to do a little too much right now. And remember, when you're plating, put the bare minimum on there. You can always put extra later. And, of course, y'all know me. That's why I'm here. Could not leave that there. Go ahead and grab your rag, Dad. Okay. 
Oh, that's crazy. And then, if we wanted to, and I think we do, I'm going to put a little bit of chat chat on the side. Boom. And that's how you do it, folks. Let me get a close-up for y'all. And there you have it, folks. A fried polenta cake topped with tomatoes, raw zucchini noodles, some smoked lox, AKA smoked salmon, and a mango chutney habanero. <laughs> yeah, and that's how we do it. Real fast foods, y'all. Real fast food.